This is the week of October 19th, 2015. On Monday, October 19th, 2015, Western Reserve News was at the Lordstown Village Council meeting. On Tuesday, Western Reserve News was at Poland Village Council meeting. On Wednesday, October 21st, Western Reserve News was at the Canfield City Council meeting. And lastly, on Thursday, October 22nd, Western Reserve News was at the Letonia Board of Education meeting. Letonia School Board President Michael Ruley issues a plea to Letonia residents to renew a levy. Well, I do have something to say, and it's extremely, extremely important, and we need to discuss it for a moment. Um, I do personally think Letonia School District is the greatest school district in the state of Ohio. I think it's hands down. I think everything that we've done has been amazing. We have an amazing campus that just celebrated our 10th anniversary. Or 11th. No, this would be 2002, so this would be 13. 13. 13. Okay. 13. So we have a 13 year old campus, and three or four years into the construction of this campus, we fell into the abyss. The financial black hole that was absolutely brutal, that almost brought this district to its knees and was almost dismembered. And all you have to do is look at the records. It's proof, it's fact, it's black and white. We lost seven levies in a row. We never did pass a levy. A levy was never passed. I was on the levy committee with Dan. We went door to door. I took off election days to drive people to the polls. The constituents spoke extremely strongly and let me know that they were never going to pass a new levy. That is why I ran for school board. That is why I'm in my seventh year of the school board and I feel honored, humbled, and privileged to be the president of the school board. But now I have to speak because this board, this superintendent, more than anything else, these teachers have done everything in their power and their existence to make this a strong district. We have moved up the rankings in student achievement, in school rankings. We've gone up 100 districts to advance towards being a South Range or a Poland or a Canfield. And we've done this with demographics demographics that are miserable and we all know that the property values have gone up a little bit which is a great thing it's your number one investment your property value the church the village the district is the core of this community we have a renewal coming up this is not a new tax there will not be one new dollar tax to anybody in this community this is a renewal this renewal is crucial for our existence I think this district has done everything in its power to be good stewards, and that's the key word, stewards of the money, along with the teachers union that has worked extraordinarily closely with us and sacrificed over two contracts. We've done everything in our power to make this district work. Rob has gone way off the charts. Not, all you have to do is call Ursula, his wife, on the phone and ask her about what a nine to five is. You can ask any of the teachers what a nine to five is. It doesn't exist in this district. I beg the people of Letonia to pass this renewal. With all the humility that has God given me, we need this renewal passed with everything that is. This is not a new tax. This will be no new taxes at all. So if you love Letonia, you know, I wasn't born here, but I've been here for 20 years. My children are born and bred in Letonia, and I am a bear to my core. I beg this community to pass this renewal. That's all I have. Thank you. Letonia School Superintendent Mino issues his report to the Board of Education. Excellent. Well, we will move into the superintendent's report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roy. First quarter of school concludes tomorrow. So, hard to believe as you go into the second quarter. Uh, I always say, uh, remember, the second quarter starts in October, ends in January. So, it's a long stretch, and it's hard to believe we're that close to. Um, uh, deep into the school year. The staff is participating in professional development day tomorrow. The focus will be on school safety. I want to thank uh, Mr. Ridgway and Mr. Radinsky and Mr. Cropsaddle met uh, for four hours with Dana Steele from the Ohio Department of Education and Homeland Security uh, to help uh, fine-tune the plan. 
Um, and then the other part of the day will be software system to create, store, and share assessments and track student progress to increase student achievement called Illuminate DNA. So all the staff will be trained in that. Uh, Channel 33 was here earlier this uh, month uh, recording our classes to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, that can be seen from November 11th to November 17th. And thank you, Mrs. Votaw, putting those dates on the website. Uh, you can just access our website and see what days our classes are on. Can I make a quick comment on sure that? Sure, you can. I actually do um, my production at that studio, and I had two of the production people from Channel 33 come up, and they said that they extend at the beginning of the season 80 different school districts, and they said that Ed Ridgeway went beyond the call of duty not only to reach out to them, but to make it convenient for the camera crews to come in. And they said that the Letonia students were the most well-behaved and it was the smoothest production of all the Pledge of Allegiance. So I wanted to thank not only the students for being so well-behaved and representing the district in a well-mannered situation, but Ed Ridgeway from just being perfect with that. Thanks to all of those guys. Yes. Thanks. No, thank you. Uh, the latest foundation uh, formula funding capacity it reflects the capacity aid uh, that Representative Ginner assisted with in the last biennium. Um, again, I'd like to thank President Ginner uh, as we saw that, 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 that come across, and he increased the total funds in the county from 3.4 to 10.9 million dollars for all county schools. The only reason I bring that up, because we've, we've talked about that enough, that we are, several schools are working with Representative Ginter for some additional ideas to increase opportunities for the students in Columbiana County. Um, uh, so I'll keep you updated on that, but we continue to try to increase opportunities for our students um, and, and be efficient. So. On Wednesday, October 21st, Western Reserve News was at the Canfield City Council meeting. At the Canfield City Council meeting, City Manager Joe Warino gives his report. Joe, what's happening in Canfield? Hey, uh, uh, we have one item of uh, business to attend to this evening, and that being a uh, change order which for the uh, Chapel Lane project. It was a small stormwater project that we accomplished this uh, fall, and uh, the results of the deduct of uh, uh, yeah, it's a deduct of $6,441 from the base bid contract for work that was uh, not performed that was not a part of the original contract. A uh, couple of items. The uh, resurfacing is now uh, completed. Uh, the Glenview, uh, Blueberry, and uh, Fairview Avenue projects. On uh, the uh, sanitary sewer project on Blueberry, we did run into some problems there. The uh, uh, the line, as it was videotaped, was uh, uh, reported to our inspector out there and our uh, consultant, MS consultants, that it's unrepairable. They can't put a liner through it. It's in that bad of a shape. Uh, we've not received the actual videotapes of what they've done up to this point, so we don't know uh, if, it's, if it could be temporarily you know, part of it fixed or if the whole thing has to be replaced. I don't have the full depth of uh, replacement at this time, but. There were uh, two pretty large sections, uh, one that was 132 feet that was, had failed and uh, they couldn't get the camera through any of that and 208 feet on the uh, eastern end of the project. So uh, once I get a little more information on that, our course will probably be a full replacement versus attempting to line it and we'll have to work on closing out that other contract. Uh, one of the things uh, we do need to, again, I keep reminding you to come up with a, uh, a member, a representative of the city for the JET board. Uh, we should be working on that and trying to get that loosened up or, or tied up by the end of uh, November. Uh, also, there will be some committee assignments uh, coming up at the end of the year, so anybody that's interested in serving on a committee with the city, if, if you are interested, get your uh, information into us. Uh, there's uh, a new board that will be established on the tax review uh, committee as well as uh, reassignments of some of the, uh, the existing board has to stay in place for two years. So there's going to be two boards to deal with that one. Uh, I think maybe now if you could explain that more. Yeah, the, sense of that. the reason is the new law impacts taxes in, for calendar year 2016 forward. 
So if somebody appealed a decision of the tax administrator from 2014 or 15, it's the old tax code that is relevant, and the old board would hear that appeal as opposed to 2016 moving forward. So at some point in time, we will for for a couple of years have you mm -hmm. And uh, I also received uh, just the other day, and I there's no reason to act on this this evening, but I'll get you a little more detailed information. But uh, we had another uh, water issue in the city, and. It could have been something that played part of the role on the oak tree uh, development and the low pressure, but there was a, a leak that's been going on for probably three months or better you know, on oak tree. Uh, they used up in excess of 220,000 gallons from their normal consumption. Uh, they told that there's not going to be any relief on the cost of water, but as we've done in the past, if sanitary agrees to deduct that from our billing, Again, it would be up to council whether they would deduct the sanitary portion. If you were to do so, it would be about 1525000 that would be removed from the bill. But I'll get you the detail and the information. You can look at it, and then we can make a better decision on that next, the next meeting. But pretty substantial, again. And it was a pretty, it's a, I guess, a two-inch water line, as I understand it, was leaking, and it's created some mold and damage to the exterior wall. So. It may have been some of the result of why you're having low pressure in that area as well. It could be. It could be real so. And I believe that's all I have under uh, course for new business. At the Poland Village Council meeting, more on the Yellow Creek. You know, we decided to let the process play out a little bit more, let future testing be done, um, to still let the public know that there is concern and there are there are these cautions, but not to be panicked. Uh, to that end, I know uh, I talked that night about um, Kate Keller from WFMJ, who I know I was going to do a story on it, and she talked to Miss Stacy, and um, and reached the same conclusion that they didn't want to create a, a stir or a panic at this time. That they're going to follow through and let the public know whatever we want. I believe, Jordan, did you do the story? Yes, Jordan did a great story in The Vindicator. They really laid out both sides. Said that, you know, there was a young man who got really sick, um, but that there is continued testing that's going to go on, and that um, the process is going to you know, play out so that we know exactly where this contamination is coming from and what is causing this so that no one else gets sick in that, you know, that water again. In the meantime, Mr. Dunn brings up a very good point. And what do we do as a as a village, as an entity. And, um, you know, I think, in my own opinion is, we do more than nothing. I think, you know, part of it was getting the message out like we did. But I think doing something to let people know or, or, or to put signs about staying away from the water for now would probably not be a bad idea. You know, not saying you've got to stay out that it's dangerous, but that, um, you know, there, there are concerns. I don't know what the um, Mill Creek folks did. Um, but something along those lines that notices the public but doesn't scare the public. And that's kind of where I, I, I read the, where everyone stands right now. And Ms. Sweeney's here too from the Board of Health. Huh? So we have, we have everyone we need right here uh, to talk about this. Steph, you want to introduce Ryan to everyone when he does? Sure. I'd just like to say that I tried to get the Ohio EPA to come in today too to share their expertise and facts from the sampling that they had done um, at the same time with Ryan and they couldn't come in without a formal invitation from the council through Columbus, so Greg Orr couldn't be here. But um, Ryan Tkak and Patricia Sweeney from Mahoney County Board of Health, I felt that inviting them as well as if I could have had the Ohio EPA here would have been a little bit more um, easier to, you know, take the information that Miss Stacy had presented and then also to hear the scientific data behind you know, what had happened on the sampling days and why they were just so different. So um, my encouragement was after that meeting was to use precaution as far as going, as far as keeping people totally out of the creek. Um, my only concern with that is, is if you do that with Yellow Creek, you might as well come out and just say every surface water is contaminated. Every surface water is not safe, including the ocean. As far as what the septic systems go that are in the area, when this complaint came in, that's the first thing we looked at. Um, there is an area that there's about, I'd say, 16 or 17 houses that are still on septics. 
Uh, we don't have any complaints currently that are on those systems, so it's something we did look into. As far as sampling goes, we can offer that. Um, however, it does come with a fee. Um, so what Mill Creek Park is doing right now, that's something that we offer to them and that they paid for. So we, we would be more than happy to offer that for you guys and sit down and, and discuss um, a strategy moving forward as far as where to sample, how often to sample, and then what it would cost. Can the board recommend an action at this time that we may take, or would they recommend no action, or would they not? Would they stay out of recommending things? Um, what, what would be the? Because you know, I, I I defer to experts in these situations. So what what would you recommend that we do, if anything? I would say, I mean, moving forward right now, we only have three samples. One sample was taken out in, in December, and that's out of the recreational season. Um, the OEC, the, the law basically states of uh, recreational waters of when to sample during the recreational season. Uh, two of the samples were taken, and they're supposed to be taken at base flow. And when they say base flow, that's when you have, I believe it's 72 hours of a non-rain event. And the reason why the EPA does that is because they want to ensure that they're not getting any, they call it non-point pollution. Non-point pollution is runoff from farm fields and whatnot. Point pollution is something that you can, you can put your eye on. It's a point, it's a source, and that can be your septic systems or, or whatnot. Um, so at this point, I wouldn't recommend, I would say, I wouldn't recommend the post science yet until you have more science behind it coming from the science background. Um, <laughs> Can I say something also? Okay. Um, I, I've talked to Pat and to Ryan about this, and I've also talked to Dr. Johnson, who's the head of the biology department at YSU. He did email me some things today, but I couldn't print them because he has, I wanted information like I got from the EPA. Uh, he, he said that he sends students out twice a year to the different areas, always to Yellow Creek, and it's always, always a different reading, and he said it's very high, and many times <clears throat> the students are, are quite concerned with the count, so that's what I wanted to get from him, was an actual printout, and he sent me like a, a scale that showed the chloroform and showed the other, and I wanted more of um, a chart that I got from the EPA when we had it tested in December. So he said it's always, always different when he sends his students out here. And he said, and to tell the people, these students aren't uh, just out of high school. They have PhDs in what they're doing. So they're very, very cautious. They're very um, particular in what they do. And he said, but we've always had different readings in Yellow Creek, and they've never been good. Front and center at the Lordstown Council meeting were representatives of the Trumbull Transit Program who explained what their program does for all Trumbull County residents. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council and members. Uh, my name is Bob Faulkner, and I currently chair the uh, transit system. Uh, in Trumbull County, and we, we appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with you this evening uh, concerning transportation in, in Trumbull County, and I want to just talk a little bit about the services that, you know, that's provided and actually solicit your support in, in the kinds of things that we are uh, have going on in Trumbull County. I have with me my vice chair, Mr. Marvin Kalich, uh, who is a, uh, a realtor, and I also brought along our, our contractor, uh, Mr. Terry Thomas from Community Bus, and you probably see uh, those buses running uh, all over the community as well as the, the transit buses. And one of the reasons that we're here today, we also pass out a, a brochure uh, that we put together that talks about all of the services that's provided in Trumbull County uh, for senior citizens. And a big part of this has to be with transportation. There is, as all of you know, there is a, a major focus uh, in the country as, as it talks about transportation. Uh, getting, of course, more vehicles off of the road, providing safe rides for seniors as, as well as students. And we understand there's a possibility, I know there's some discussion now with your group about transportation. We just wanted to talk to you 
uh, about an interest that you could be a part of our system. This does a, a, a few things that I think is critical for all of us. Uh, the more uh, communities that we can provide the transportation to, uh, we are part, of course, the, the Federal Transit Administration. So the more people and the more services that you provide, the more funds that we can receive and, and therefore provide more transportation to, to additional people. I, I saw your resolution tonight for TCAP. And we, we're not competing in any way with that type of a service. Uh, what you have here, this is a report to the community from the commissioners to tell you that through your county tax dollars and through the tax dollars that you pay for the senior levy, you already have a countywide system. So you, 365 days a year, whether you're a senior citizen, whether you're disabled, or whether you're John Q. Public, you can pick up the phone and call the transit system, and how you do that is on the inside of the front cover, and it's overseen by the transit board, and, and there's a good description of them on the inside of the back cover. That's there now for anybody, and we're one of the few systems that run 365 days a year. That's for anybody. It's a public system. The Lordstown schools belong to this system through the co-op. So there are students who, who ride this system, whether the TCTC or other students of the schools. And then uh, Mr. Armstrong wanted me to pass on that they're very, very supportive of having the transit system as it relates to the supplement for school kids who are better served on this system. But also, I want to make sure you're aware, the second to the last page with the three graphics for Ohio, it's talking about how Ohio is aging, and it goes back to the year 2000, then 2010, then 2020. Those are the counties uh, in red that, that, uh, that are over, right? they have a certain percentage of the population over 65. The reason this senior levy, which is up for renewal, by the way, uh, on November 3rd, is so important, uh, is that the other services that are provided besides transportation, are, are included in, and very well described in, in this document. But the transportation component is critical, so I wanted to make sure that you know we're not competing with TCAP right. for that level of service. That's number one. But you have available to you, even if you're not a participating community, this countywide service 365 days a year. And as Bob mentioned, if you join as a participating community, which is a cost to you of 50 cents per year per citizen in the village, uh, and, and in your jurisdiction, and then you would get a, a reduced fare from two dollars, because we have to give two dollars senior citizen countywide rides. Yours would go to a dollar fifty, and that's anywhere in the county, and, and it includes dialysis centers in Hermitage, and in Boardman, and the Veterans Center um, in, in Youngstown as well. So it, it's a very profound system. It works well. We run like 99 percent on time, and. Uh, I just wanted you to make sure that you're, you're aware of the services, and, and of course we want you to, to vote for the senior levy when it comes back up. Senior levy was first passed in 2005, and again in 10, that's up again. In now, if the village, okay, and then this is just another question, because I have had response from residents over this issue, this is going to become a pretty big issue. If the village does nothing, our residents still can use your program. Yes. Well, it's, it's, it's there right program. now. Mm -hmm. It's there now. I just wanted to clarify that. And that's, that's through the senior levy. Yes. And then, yeah, the now, levy. you're saying $2 a trip if we did nothing or $1.50 for, for for if, if we joined for, for senior citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, say like if you came and brought somebody to our nutrition site and then took them back, that would be either 3 or $4, or would that well, be considered? senior citizens, it would be $2 each way. Mm -hmm. It'll be a dollar fifty if you join. If they weren't senior citizens, then it goes up to the four, and then we have the eight dollars. Say it was it was a, a person who was uh, didn't have a disability, wasn't a senior citizen. Oh, it's eight dollars each way. Because you know, I don't know, you know, how the ordinance came about for the TCAP. You know, other than they're looking at, you know, possibly trying to figure out whether we want to stay in the bus business. Or Councilman John Mansell explains his point of view as to why Lordstown should maintain transportation on their own. I think this service would be fantastic. The residents already have access to it. TCAP, the residents have access to it. 
if the village wants to work out an agreement to where we're going to help fund the residents or reimburse them, I really have no problem, but I still am supporting a new bus. Their hours doesn't cover everything we have served our residents with. And I feel senior citizens are as important to me as children. They're both the most important things we've got. We have a recreation program that just beats anything in Trumbull County for our children. And I do not understand the mentality. When this village is financially okay, I'm not going to sit like a bunch of candidates and sit there and say we've got a lot of money because we don't have a lot of money, but we are financially okay. Why do we want to cut services to any of our residents? Okay, 6 o'clock does not cover the concerts that our residents threw a fit over not being able to go to, and I think that's a good service. There's other ways that we can resolve the problem about where the bus driver has to sit. I've had conversation with people on that. Nothing says he needs to sit down there behind Packard Park in the dark. He could go to Mocha House or somewhere like that, have a coffee. I'll buy him a breakfast or a lunch or whatever it is if that's what it is. We have, a, we have an expense and account in the village for our employees. Th these are foolishness. And I don't know why this council wants to sit here and cut services to our senior citizens. I will support this program. It's already there. Our residents can use it, but I still will support a new bus when it comes time. I think we need to investigate that because this doesn't cover everything. It's a fantastic program, but I don't understand the mentality that started cutting services to our residents. Lordstown gives a 1981 Pierce fire truck to Mission of Love Foundation. I'm Kathleen Price, and I'm the director and founder of the Mission of Love Foundation, <coughs> which I started 30 years ago. Uh, we're very grassroots, very simple, and we're not here to save the world, but we are here to touch the hands that are within our reach. Tonight, we have a very, very special evening. That is, we're supplying, because of the mayor, council, you, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, their very first fire truck. Very first fire truck in America to service 44,000 Native Americans. It's a third world here. And because of you, they're going to be able to save their grasslands. They're going to be able to save their homes because they'll have a fire truck. And if Ronnie, um, I got the request from um, the volunteer firemen, which they don't have a truck, but they're trying to pull things together. And Ron called and he said, Dom, are you interested in a fire truck? We advertised it, but nobody showed any, any interest. And do you want to come and see it? And before I knew it, I was sitting in the mayor's office and giving him my call of compassion for my friends on the Native American Reservation in South Dakota. <coughs> and we all thought, hey, this might be a good idea. Instead of selling it for salvation, we could literally service a whole community from Lordstown, Ohio to Kyle, South Dakota. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Because of a phone call, because of the mayor, because of council, taking the time to care about their fellow citizens, their fellow Native Americans, our first Americans.